everybody, it's K-Beast, and for this week's video, I am partnering with Arteza to give you a review of some of their products. A few weeks ago, they got in contact with me and asked me if I would be interested in doing a review, and I said yes. And they sent me their 12 color set of watercolor paints and their 24 set of their gouache paints. So if you, at any point you wind up interested in these products and you would like to purchase them, I have an affiliate link in the description below that will save you 10% off your order. Um, and it'll also help me out at no cost to you. So check them out below. I've got a link to their general site as well as to the individual products if those are what you're interested in. So before I actually get into the products themselves, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about Arteza. Uh, first off, this video is not sponsored. They sent these products to me for free. So this is my honest opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. This is my honest opinion. I'm not being paid for this. Um, Arteza is based in the United States. I believe somewhere in Delaware. Um, their products are made in China, I believe. Um, and their goal is, is, I specifically took a quote from their website that I really liked. And it says, our modus operandi is providing high quality tools at prices artists can afford. I really like that idea. They're basically trying to make high quality products at an affordable price because there is that whole idea of like the starving artist. Art supplies generally aren't cheap. So they're trying to make it more affordable. And I, I, I like that idea. That, that, is, that is a very good thing to do. <laughs> um, so they sent me, first off, they sent me the 12 set of their premium watercolors, which retails on their site for $9.99, which is really good. Um, the tubes themselves are 12 milliliters. So that's quite a bit of paint you're getting in there, especially because it's getting watered down. And that kind of winds up being about 83 cents a tube. Now the reason I'm saying this is because my other student quality watercolor that I use frequently is the Windsor Newton Cotman. And that one, well I usually buy it at Michael's, that's $6 a tube for 8 milliliters. So it's already way cheaper. Um, and honestly the quality, not that bad. Um, it, it definitely feels like a student quality watercolor. Um, but the, um, it's not like high quality pigment, but it's very bright. It's very pigmented. Um, it feathers well when you mix it with water. Um, they put a titanium white in there. I've never really understood why watercolor sets have white pigment before because, you know, generally speaking, when you're working with watercolor, your whites is the white of the paper. You leave it blank or something, but they put that in there and because it's watercolor, it is very transparent. Um, but it looks nice, so I guess, like, if you wanted to use it, you probably could. But, yeah, I didn't have any problems with any of the pigments. Um, like I said, I got the 12 set, so I didn't have the full range of colors they offer. But they gave you a really nice balance of both cool and warm tones in all the, in all the primaries, as well as the green. Um, you have a warm yellow and a cool yellow, and all the colors there, and you have a black, which is called Noir. Um, and is actually pretty dark. So there uh, is slight chalkiness on some of the earth tones, but I've noticed with student grade um, watercolors and paints that tends to happen with earth, with earth tones, but it's really not that noticeable. And my Windsor Newton Cotman's kind of have the same thing, so it didn't really throw me off at all. But if you're if that's something that you're worried about, I would keep that in mind. So yeah, so I really liked these and. I did a quick little portrait of one of my OCs with this. I actually had another painting that I started with both of these. I decided to combine both the watercolor and the gouache in one painting and that didn't work. <laughs> uh, basically four hours of work wind up getting tossed aside because um, I'm not as familiar with gouache as I am with watercolor and when I started adding the gouache on top of it I made a lot of mistakes and it's traditional art so there's no undo button. So I decided to do some two small paintings, one with each different kind of paint to make it a little easier on myself. So this actual review is based off of the big painting and the little ones because I did play with the paints for about four hours before I scrapped that other painting. Um, but yeah, no, I had a really good time using them with this little painting. Um, I got some good, some good gradients in there. I really like the, the effect I got in the background. Um, yeah, just basically just really nice colors 
and definitely, definitely gonna keep using them along with my Windsor and Newton. So I've got 12 more tubes of paint to use, which is nice, but I, I really did enjoy these. So <clears throat> now the other one that I got is the gouache. This is the 24 set. Um, these tubes are also 12 milliliters. Uh, the only other gouache I've ever used is the Reeves gouache, which I got at Michael's. I got the 18 color set, um, but the uh, the 20 there Reeves makes a 24 set online that goes for 18.99. The gouache set that from Arteza is 19.89, so it's slightly more expensive. But the tubes are also bigger; they're 12 milliliters. The Reeves is 10, so basically it's kind of about the same price. Um, so, but I actually really liked the Arteza gouache better than the Reeves. So, yeah, if you're looking for a student grade gouache to get started with, the Arteza is not bad. Um, I am still learning how to use gouache. So, unfortunately, I struggled with the paint a lot, but that had less to do with the brand and more to do with my own inexperience. The only time I've really used gouache before is with watercolor to add some final details on top. But I decided to do an entire painting, so I got very frustrated, which I'm sure the footage will show. I went over details a lot to try to fix it, especially with um, her face. Skin tones are very hard to mix reliably, especially when they're darker, and gouache dries differently than how it looks when it's wet. So I had to redo it a lot, and I'm still not 100% satisfied with it, but I managed to save it. Um, but yeah, that that again is more to do with I'm still learning how to use gouache. <laughs> but as for the as for the colors themselves, um, I, I'm very happy with this set. It's a very nice selection of colors. Again, there's a lot of warm tones and cool tones. There's two different whites in this set: titanium and just regular white. The actual tube itself has what looks like a different pigment in it. I'm not really sure how to read all the symbols on the actual tubes themselves. It looks like there's something, like the plus signs might have something to do with light fastness, but I can't be 100% certain. And the little square, um, it probably has to do with transparency, which did seem to add up. The empty squares, when I did my swatches, did, tend, did look more transparent than the other ones. Um, but yeah, between the two whites, the titanium white had more granulation in it when I did my swatching, and the regular white did not, so I used that primarily when I was painting. Um, one color that completely blew me away when I was painting was the peach red. Um, that's not peach. That's pink. <laughs> that's like neon pink. Like, I don't think my footage can show it justice, but it's like highlighter pink. Like, when I squeezed it out on my palette, it completely blew me away. My note actually says PANK in all caps when I was taking my notes and doing the swatching. So, I had to use the pink for something which prompted my first painting that I just destroyed, basically. Um, I might try to salvage it later when I know how to use gouache better. So I wanted to use it on this painting, and my two OCs are characters who dye their hair a lot. So I'm like, I'll just throw some pink on there. And yeah, um, gouache gets reactivated with water. Um, I'm aware of that, but I have never actually seen it happen until I tried putting the pink on her hair, and it reactivated the brown underneath and kind of got muddy. Still learning gouache. It's a learn. There's a process there. It's a. It's a little, a little different from watercolor, but um, again, the colors themselves were very nice. They dried pretty matte, especially the black. The black dried so nicely. Definitely gonna have fun playing with that one. Um, and I didn't see any excessive chalkiness, like not not compared to the Reeves. The Reeves had way more, um, and the Reeves didn't dry as cleanly as this one did. So. So yeah, I am actually pretty pleased with these as well, and gouache is something that I want to learn more how to use, and I think for doing studies and just trying to figure out how to use gouache, I'm probably going to use the Arteza more than the Reeves, um, which sucks because I just bought the Reeves a couple months ago, and now I'm not, probably not going to use it that much, but that's okay. Um, you know. But yeah, uh, I definitely recommend this set if you're trying to learn how to use gouache. Um, it pretty much retails for about the same price as most beginner sets of gouache and you got a nice range of colors and the tubes are nice and nice and big so 
The only major downside I had with both paints is there is a lot of flakiness after they dry in your palette. I didn't use a folding palette because I didn't have a spare lying around. I had this really massive open palette that I just used for mixing space and I just used that. So I didn't have to close it up, which is good, but um, there was a lot of flakiness and, and the actual paint just kind of fell right off. So I have seen other people using these products online mentioning like mixing honey with them or something to get them to dry better. So you might want to look into how to do that. I haven't done it yet because I want to get a folding palette for the gouache first before I try that out. Um, but yeah, bear in mind they do flake and fall off. But that's kind of universal with student grade paints. My Windsor Newton Cotman, they do that all the time and I have to rewet them to get them to stick. So when you get cheaper paints, it just kind of happens. It has something to do with the binders or whatever, or the filler probably. But you know, considering the cheap price, um, I'm pretty pleased with the vibrancy of the pigments. So you're definitely going to be able to do a lot with these. So yeah, um, it was pretty good stuff. I'm definitely going to have to play with these more. And uh, thank you again to Arteza for sending me these and letting me try them out. So if you're interested in trying any of this stuff out, please check out the links in my description below. And yeah, I guess that kind of does it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.